Okay, so you probably like my YouTube channel because you like small animals underwater. And uh, so you'll get your fix. So before we start talking about the topic of today's video, which is my struggle with dengue fever, I'm gonna show you some pictures, uh, some footage actually, <laughs> of a bobtail squid, which is a minute cephalopod, which lives actually really close to us here obviously in the ocean and uh yeah highly interesting animal it's it's biofluorescence it emits its own light and there will be a video dedicated to that animal very soon now what am i going to talk about today and this is the bout i had with dengue fever now this is something not very positive obviously and nevertheless this is a part of life and this was such an experience that I decided to make a video about it. Now at this point as usual there is a disclaimer which is usually the disclaimer is I'm not a doctor which is wrong. I am actually a doctor just I'm, I'm a zoologist meaning I'm an expert for small fishes and brain cells. I'm not a medical doctor so it should really uh, go without saying that if you have a medical problem you should go to your doctor or to the hospital and not you know listen to some dude on youtube and particularly not not to me so you know what i'm uh, telling you about is my experience with this disease now this was quite a striking 10 days so th this was not like having a flu or you know having a little bit of a cold so this is worth uh, explaining to people who might you know, live in a part of the world where there is no dengue and who might actually be scared of uh, traveling to the tropics. They should not be scared. But you know, to answer the title uh, of the video, you know, how bad is dengue really? It's bad. Now, let's start at the beginning. And the, the beginning in this case is 2017 where I was already in the Philippines and at the point I got a really bad fever and I felt terrible for about a week and afterwards I was I was quite uh, exhausted for probably another week so I did not get a diagnosis at this point but I'm pretty sure in retrospect I had dengue now why is this important because very often the second time or the third time you get dengue it gets worse there is not a tolerance which builds up it's kind of an anti-tolerance and so this is what happened this time that the second time i actually got significantly sicker now again we have to go back to the beginning at one point during about uh, three weeks ago a mosquito bit me and this mosquito i didn't even notice i do not recall having a mosquito bite during that time nevertheless this must have happened and in the saliva of that mosquito was a little bit of dengue virus and the dengue virus is a plus strand rna virus see i know these things because i'm a doctor of zoology and then um the thing is that so there is a piece of RNA which is only an intermediate uh, information storage in humans when going from the DNA where our genetic information is to proteins however the, the actual information storage genetic information storage in these viruses is in RNA so they, they make based on that RNA a couple of proteins which then help to make more of that RNA now this took a couple of days of course to develop so there's an incubation period if i believed in magic i would i would believe in the following thing so when the sim just before the symptoms started i found that one of the stupid feral cats which live around our house i uh, had killed a ground bird a rail ticking in Visaya, which really upset me and as a consequence I, I got, got angry and you know hours an hour later the symptoms started and then 
So, you know, if I believed in magic, <laughs> I would believe that there is some connection between the dead bird and, you know, there's a uh, unfortunate ecological problem with the feral cats and the symptoms. But obviously that was not the case. So it was just a temporal coincidence. Now, what happened then, I, you know, after I calmed down when, you know, after chasing away that cat, that I took a nap and I woke up feeling terrible. And I started having these high fevers and these fevers where, you know, there were also, there was a, a large component with this, this nasty fever dreams. There were these people who were like scammers, you know, identity thieves in my fever dreams who were after me. And then I would wake up and these dream states would follow me. So I would think, well, you know, that couldn't happen, couldn't it? But then I wasn't sure. So, you know, the, the first 30 minutes after waking up, from these fever dreams, I, I was, you know, still uh, annoyed and uh, affected. So this lasted for about three or four days, and then it didn't get better. So at that point, I decided I had to go to the doctor. But th this was not just some little flu. And the doctor, you know, the the rural doctors in the Philippines are quite good with these diseases, right? Because they see them all the time. And he sent me to the hospital. I did a, both a, a blood check as well as a specific test for dengue, for, uh, you know, for dengue evoked antibodies, and that was positive. And also my, you know, my blood counts, particularly the, the platelets, looked very much like dengue. So uh, there, is, there are these platelets in human bodies and also generally in mammalian bodies which are cells without a nucleus and which which help in causing uh, you know uh, blood clotting when you have some kind of injury and this is a, a well-known symptom of dengue that this would uh, be reduced right and so if you if your numbers go really low you even have to get a transfusion of platelets Unfortunately, I didn't get to that point, uh, even though my numbers didn't look very good. So at uh, that point, I uh, went to the, went back to the hospital where I had uh, done that test, which is Ace Hospital in Tumagete, which I can highly recommend. You know, uh, very competent doctors, you know, modern medical equipment. And by the time I got there and I checked myself in, I was not in good shape anymore. And there were, there were a couple of things which were really wrong with me. Now, if you're a free diver, you've probably seen or used these pulse oximeters, right? Which is a little clip which you put around your finger and then uh, it shows how much oxygen is in your blood. Now the free divers, you know, they do these crazy static breath holds and then, you know, their, their uh, blood oxygenation level uh, drops and they're kind of proud of this. Now. I was just laying on a hospital bed and instead of my blood oxygenation being about 95 and up, which is normal, it, it was something like 83%. So I was, you know, I was lacking oxygen in my system at this point because I was so sick. I, I still had these fevers and I was uh, massively dehydrated. I also had no appetite during the days uh, leading up to the hospital check-in. Now you you probably get the idea, right? I mean, this is why am I telling you that? Because I'm kind of a hypochondriac. No, so so this is not a you know this is not a little flu. Uh, you know this is not like a slightly upset stomach which just stays with you for a couple of days. So uh, this this was a serious sickness, and uh, you know. Uh, in life, you uh, you win some, you lose some, right? Some months I get to go on these amazing dives, and this is hopefully why you're following my channels. So this month I had, you know, this this severe tropical disease, and it's a, you know it's nothing positive, but it's worth sharing. It's this is definitely a a crass experience. So, so what happened next? Um, I got on and they put me on an IV 
and at that point they weighed me and uh, you usually I weigh about 107 kilos at that point I weighed 101 kilos so I had lost six kilos of water weight I was so dehydrated that this uh, we uh, actually did a lot of good and the you know I recovered rather quickly now it still took a while for my, my blood values to recover and on top of that I also got a you know a severely upset digestive system as a consequence of, of that thing so I was just not in a good state for about uh, you know there were uh, four days where I was sick at home and then there were four days where I was sick in the hospital where I was constantly on an IV and you know they did a couple of checks uh, my internal organs and things like that so fortunately eventually I got better but then even then once you know the fever was gone and you know the gastrointestinal irritation was gone I, I was still uh, I was very drained so you know you if you follow my channel you see that I'm going scuba diving all the time which you know it takes quite some effort and you know I also I uh, power lift right so I'd go to the gym and not do, do a little bit of fitness I'd go you know bench press 120 kilos for reps and I did not feel like bench pressing 120 kilos for reps at this point so you know this was there was both a very uh, nasty acute phase where you know both my blood didn't look very good I didn't have enough oxygen in my system you know my my digestive system really went went downhill and uh, then you know that was followed by a phase where I was still just exhausted so the, you know this was this was probably the sickest I've ever been and so this is again right this is not going to be a channel about tropical diseases or about you know me catching a cold but this was such a crass crass week that i thought it's interesting to share this now so so i've been in the philippines on and off for eight years and so i've got this twice and uh what can you do to not get this well obviously you know make sure you're uh, not get you don't get bitten by mosquitoes now i've uh we use this also on my little son and the rest of the family we have this off lotion which is a lotion which just essentially has a chemical which gets mosquitoes to not to come to you and you know we um quite careful with the mosquitoes sometimes we burn these coils that they don't get us so this is the thing to do um yeah so this happened twice in eight years so if you're planning on visiting the tropics or particularly the Philippines this should not uh, you know scare you away uh, nevertheless you know so, the, so there's a uh, a real small but real possibility of getting this so this this is just a way of life in the tropics you know if you go hiking up in the Himalayas you might lose at all to frostbite this is not going to happen here but the the dengue is a there's a certain likelihood that you could get this and then you know i guess the thing is you just once you start feeling sick you really should go to the hospital that they stabilize your state you know rehydrate you and make sure that you know you're, you're not going downhill and that they're, they're right there to intervene if you're going downhill so so this was my last uh, this this were my last 10 days of my life you know not uh, any scuba diving uh, and this is gonna take a couple of it's probably gonna take at least a week or two before I'm back in the water I hope you found this interesting uh, you know this was again right this uh personal hardships uh you know health problems is not going to be the future of this channel of course but this was such a crass and unusual event that i thought i would share it uh you know check back soon for actually the next video i'm planning is one about the biology of cephalopods squid and octopi and um, have a great day